EA Sports. It's in the game. To me, it's all about Tom Brady. He's just one of those guys, if, if the game's on the line, you need a big play, he'll make that play for you. Now let's take a minute to see how you can improve your team. Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned into the NFL on EA Sports. The biggest challenge for these teams here may be dealing with the weather. Rain is falling, the field is slick, and it's not going to get any better as the game goes on. It'll be messy out there. It's the Steelers going up against the Dolphins. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to rain-soaked Miami, Florida. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Miami Dolphins. Hi again, everyone. Brandon Gunn along with Charles Davis and CD Week 3 of the preseason. We're getting there. Opening night on the horizon. Madden video game out on Friday the 25th, so you know we're close. But this is the week he uses your dress rehearsal, isn't it? Yeah, you certainly do. Now, the guys that know they're going to make this team and have be difference makers in the season, they're probably more looking forward to the Madden game being released than this game. But this is the one, as you said, is dress rehearsal. You want it to be exactly like it's going to be on opening day. And they'll regulate the play time of the starters, but they want them to be out there just like they're playing a regular game for the time that they play. Set to go now on a wet and rainy night, and we are underway from Miami. This one fielded at the five. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. So here come the Dolphins now as they get set to take over on offense. They're led out by their strong-arm quarterback out of Texas A&M. It's Ryan Tannehill. I think one of the things I like about Ryan Tannehill's game is that he understands what his receivers are looking for downfield. He played that position at Texas A&M before becoming the starting quarterback. So a lot of times when he's in the pocket looking downfield, he's actually running the routes with the receivers as he remembers them. Now a play fake here on first down. Over the middle complete. That's four. And he's brought down after a good game. Now it appears we have a Steeler here slow to get up. Definitely the last thing you want to see here in a preseason game. We'll be right back. So here we go, first and ten now. I got one, I got one. Here we go, 
They go play action here on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Bud Dupree coming in from that outside linebacker spot to bury him for a loss of seven. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. Yeah, blink of an eye. That happened fast and a big sack. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. He's able to get four back on the run, but now they'll have to find something here on third and about 14. And here now a look at the Dolphins' offensive unit. One of the things I've always enjoyed about watching Kenny Stills play is his passion for the game. You can tell he absolutely loves being out there, has a ball when he's out on the football field. But the other thing, he can fool you. He looks like a slot receiver, but runs great routes from the outside and creates big plays downfield. They'll fake it. Now Tannehill. Oh, a scram for the football, and he's going to come down with it. That one goes for 29 yards on third down. Well, we know he's got the speed there. He needed the speed and the hands. A great catch. And because of that speed, you have to respect it as a defender. So you have to either play off or make sure you're somehow in contact with him. And he's able to do exactly what you said. Use the speed to his advantage and go up and get the football. That's a big-time play right there. down following that long game. They'll fake the handoff. Now Tannehill. And incomplete there. Almost picked off. That's one you maybe expect your roaming free safety to come up with. But it's second down. And the starting defensive unit here for Pittsburgh. In today's NFL, you're not just looking for height from your cornerbacks. You're looking for length in order to combat the tall, wide receivers that they have to play against each and every week. And Artie Burns has all of that. In addition, he has the ability to change direction and make plays on the football in the air. And finally, he's a willing tackler, which is really key for cornerbacks today. to the air. Tannehill on second down. And he comes back with one complete. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives him a much better opportunity to convert on third down. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll be brought down, but a tip of the cap on the spin move as that gives him a first down. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. The one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense. And he will score! Touchdown, Miami! Ryan Tannehill, a 10-yard touchdown run. And the Dolphins take it right down and score on the opening drive. That's just a solid, methodical drive to start this game. And how about how it culminated? Doing exactly what they wanted to do, getting the ball downfield, and then running it into the end zone. I'm just telling you, partner, when you run it in rather than throw it in, that hurts the defense psychologically a heck of a lot more. Graham Gano on for the extra point. Footing like. 
likely going to be an issue all night here on a rainy night, but this one is good. Gano out to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. So the Steelers' offense getting set for their first drive. And they'll be led out by Big Ben, their veteran quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger. He's one of the more exalted quarterbacks in the league, but I still don't think he gets enough appreciation for his ability to read defenses and lead his ball club. Here's the first carry for Le'Veon Bell. And they'll blow that one up back at the 16-yard line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Good luck trying to get your running game going against Indominus Sue. I mean, he is so strong. Just trying to move him, take one guy, two guys, whatever. I wish you a whole lot of luck. He usually converts an offensive running game into rubble. Burger to throw on second down. And that's incomplete. Antonio Brown, the intended receiver, at its third down. This offense has some speed, and certainly Martavis Bryant, he has some speed. He has that, and he has size. That's what makes him so difficult to cover, because just when you think you have to play him one way, the other attribute kicks in. Martavis Bryant could be an all-star real soon. Third down, Roethlisberger. And the Dolphins rush gets home. Down he goes. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it. But it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. On fourth down, here comes the Steeler punter Jordan Berry to kick it away. And the kicks away as he angles this one for the sideline. And this one goes sailing out of bounds. Where did it cross? Well, they're going to say on this side of midfield. So now here come the Dolphins. And coming up on their second drive of the game, had the touchdown last time out. Now they have the football back. Chance to really seize early momentum. Feels to me like they had a really excellent week of practice. It all came together. But I'll bet you it got galvanized in the locker room in pregame. Somehow I think the head coach... His oratorical skills were on point. On first and ten, Tannehill. Wide open receiver complete. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Second down. You know, last week I remember asking you, what would an offensive coordinator be looking for week two of the preseason? Now we're in week three. Defensive coordinator-wise, what's he looking at? For the most part in preseason, you're playing pretty basic stuff, pretty vanilla defenses. You're looking for guys that play with abandon, that just go out and make plays. You kind of let their athletic ability take over in order for you to notice them. Roger, Roger. 
On second and ten, Tannehill. And he can't hang on. That's definitely going to be one he wishes he had back. Incomplete in the end zone. I know you felt like saying touchdown there, didn't you, partner? That looked like a sure six points, but the contact jarred it free. Got his hands on it, could not hold on through the end of the play. So now third and ten, a big play to start the drive, but nothing since. Throwing on third down, Tannehill. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Well, that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. And on third down, maybe said, forget about the sticks. We want six. They'll try the field goal now with Graham Gano. From the right hash, it's a 41-yard attempt. And the 11-year veteran bangs it through, and the lead moves to 10 zip. So a good snap, good hold, and that one's right down the middle. Never in doubt. Just the way you used to hit him, Brandon. <laughs> Knocking through the field goal. Here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. That'll be taken in the end zone. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five as he's taken down right at the 20. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. What are your thoughts on this D-line? I love a unit that can control the run and get after the passer. This is an all-around terrific defensive front. Hard to move the ball against them on the ground, and then when you want to throw it, look out. Here they come after the quarterback. Second down following the run. Again, it's Bell. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. He's going to float this one deep right side. Throw it across his body, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Rashad Jones. And he'll return this one just shy of midfield to the 49. And Brandon, the passing game for both of these teams is going to be affected as the game goes along. It's not looking like the rain's going to let up anytime soon. So that might mean a few more wobbly passes and wide receiver slips. And this one winds up getting intercepted. The Dolphins offense now working their way back onto the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, let's get three, right? <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. 
That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Tannehill now to throw. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going to go down. The game plan for any defense is finding ways to make a quarterback uncomfortable in the pocket. When you bring pressure from all angles, you never know who's going to get home. In this case, the left cornerback right in the face of him puts him down. So after the sack of Tannehill, the Dolphins come up here on a third and long. Tannehill. And that is incomplete. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. Back deep for the Steelers, Antonio Brown. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. It's been an awfully slow start for them. This is their third possession. They don't have a first down yet. So that means they have to change up what they're doing. And for some teams, it's a change in tempo, usually moving it to more up-tempo type of an offense just to try and change their fortunes right now. What they've been doing so far isn't working. Maybe they'll do that. They'll start the drive with a carry by Bell. And not much room there, so he'll get it up only to about the 21. And after getting tackled, he's still down and looking very slow to get up. Definitely the last thing you want to see here in a preseason game. We'll be right back. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. James has got it, complete. And down he'll go at the 25. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. From the gun on third down, it's Roethlisberger. Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted, thrown back across his body. Picked off here the 32. And he will bring it back. It's a pick six and a Dolphins touchdown. Third down, passing down. They throw the extra defensive back in there for a nickel package, and it worked out. And it's not anything that you would think is just great strategy. It's just that when you have five defensive backs on the field and an obvious passing down, it's a lot tougher to complete a pass. And on that play, they completed it just to the wrong team, and it cost them six points. Gano now to add the extra point. He's got it, and it's 17 0. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six.
So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. That's fielded in the end zone. Here comes Ben Roethlisberger and the Steeler offense back onto the field. Bottom line, he's got to figure things out. He's completed three passes, but two of them have been to the wrong team so far. And when we talk about the best quarterbacks, we're usually talking about touchdown to interception ratio, aren't we? And two to one is acceptable, but the top line guys, three to one or better is what they're looking for. Now we're talking about interceptions versus completions. That's not a ratio should ever be in any discussion. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. No gain on that run. And while this team is down, they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe you just have to think about different style of running in order to get this guy going. Stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. And while there is no gain on that run, we do know coaches whose identity is rooted in taking it almost to the limit and then changing things up on you down the stretch. I think we're getting really close to that point in time, though, where the identity may have to go out the window. They've got to go a little bit faster in order to try and win the game. The Steelers on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and 10. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Here's Jordan Berry now as he'll punt it away for the second time. It's taken on the 25. It's a 47-yard punt, return of six, and it'll be Dolphin football. The Dolphins offense now ready to go back out onto the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Now it's Tannehill. Position on him, and he pulls it in. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. So there on that play, offensively, they were in the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let him know that that receiver is crossing from your zone to the next zone he's coming your way make sure you have him and then when the ball is actually thrown secure the tackle when they're moving on crossing routes if you miss a tackle it usually results in a big play they'll run it now out of the gun and he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain yeah, give him four yards there it'll be second and six And they're six yards away from picking up the first here on second down. Here's Tannehill. He's going to air one out. 
And they went for a big play through the air on second down. Couldn't connect. Now it's third. Well, not that we had any questions, but it's obvious his arm does not hurt today, does it? He does not mind slinging it around. He is firing that pigskin around the yard. Yeah, putting it deep downfield, taking shots. Unsuccessful there, but I like his moxie. From the gun on third down, Tannehill. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. A pretty sizable deficit here in the first quarter. This defense will probably need to get off the field in those situations on third down. And you and I both know in this huddle before that last third down play, that's exactly what they talked about. Let's make a play. Let's get off the field. Let's reverse the momentum. Instead, they got hit with another first down, almost back to the drawing board. Play action. It's Tannehill rolling to his right. So he's got a man wide open, complete. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. 23 yards on the play. Looked like the defense put pretty good pressure on him, but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people. On the run, had to get on his horse. Still accurately throws a nice pass for a first down. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. From the red zone now, Tannehill. And his throw is incomplete. The positioning here is key. As a defensive back, you're taught 99% of the time, make a play on the football. But in this case, making a play on the man was all the difference. That's what forced the incompletion. Ten yards still left on second down. To the air again, Tannehill. He's got it. Touchdown, Dolphins. And the defensive there, that was a battle. He just made a really nice play. A really nice play, making sure his body position was correct. And how about the throw? Zipped it in there. And it results in the touchdown. Gano for the extra point. And the lead is now 24. Gano out to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. The Steelers' offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. Typically down in the first half, I might say, oh, you at least need a field goal out of this drive. <laughs> but they're down to the point where they need a touchdown, don't they? Yeah, and normally you know me. I mean, you've been around me for a while now, right? Unfortunately. I'm the, yeah, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but normally I'm the one pr uh, preaching patience. Yeah. You know, take your time, first half, you still got a chance. I think they're out of patience here. This has to be a drive that gets a touchdown. So if you're the play caller, you're going to that portion of the sheet 
that says big time plays, specials, anything you can use to get yourself back into it. That's a matchup maybe they go back to their outer third of the field as this game continues. Yeah, I think back to my high school coach, John Ford, he used to say when we got big plays early in a game or good plays, he'd always say, foul it away, lad, foul it away, because he'd want to come back to it later in a key situation. They may come back to this one a little more often than that. Didn't he say laddie or did he say lad? Yeah, it just depended on what he was feeling at the okay. moment. Okay, I thought, I thought that was the guy you told me about that used to say laddie a lot. Laddie, when you heard laddie, he was usually in a pretty good mood. Lad, yeah. Roethlisberger will hand to Connor. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. 23 yards on the pickup there and a first. I have to admit, I'm excited by that play call and the end result because this is a team that's down big early in the first quarter, and a lot of teams will just panic, abandon the playbook, and just start firing the ball all over the place. It's way too early for that. Stick to what works for you. Down double digits, and we talked about their game plan being both running and passing there. You're right. They're sticking to the game plan, getting the ground game going. A lot of football left to be played. Again, it's Connor. <laughs> A big hit. Knocked down sideways. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. No gain on that run, and while the team is down, there's still time to come back and win the football game. If I'm the offensive coordinator, though, I've got to think about moving at a faster pace and maybe opening things up a little bit and throwing it a little bit more. And he'll get it down inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll set up a third down. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. And the Steelers on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This will be third and five. Roethlisberger. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. A pickup of five that time and a first down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. They go play action now. Roethlisberger letting one go deep for the end zone and nearly picked it off. He had a chance to come down with that in the end zone, but it'll wind up just being incomplete. Another dangerous throw there, partner. I mean, he's already thrown two interceptions here in the first half. I don't know if you want to keep throwing up 50-50 balls and you've had that kind of lack of success. Yeah, absolutely. Very well could have been a third interception in half number one. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. They run with Connor. And not much. Maybe a yard down to the 23. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? And the Steelers on third down. Just one for five to this point. This is third and nine. To throw here, Roethlisberger. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. Yeah, really turned it loose, didn't he? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. Now Chris Boswell for the Steelers' field goal try. From the right hash, this from an even 40 yards out. Back. 
And Boswell's kick is good. And the drive will wind up yielding three. So the scoring drive encompasses nine plays, but the net gain, three points. And you're going to have drives like that in this league. Sometimes you just got to take the three and move on. Always better than nothing. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This fielded at the two. <laughs> and now Ryan Tannehill becomes a focus of our players' spotlight. Now they must have seen something leading up to this one that said, hey, we're going to be able to go deep because they've gone deep with a lot of success. And pick your phrase, pick your code words, your buzzwords, whatever, vertical stretch, deep passes. Go routes, right? What's that Five. route you love? What's that oh, route you four love? Verts. Four verts. All of it working because they're able to find ways to get deep and for him to show off that big, big arm. We see some of that big arm right here. He has been great. Now a first down throw, Tannehill. An incomplete crisis averted. Almost picked. Instead, second down. I think it's pretty safe to say that when you're up three touchdowns, the last thing you want to do is hang one up there and put it in jeopardy and possibly get it intercepted. Get a nice lead. You should be able to protect it. But if you get careless with the football, look out. Offense still needing 10 yards. Second down. It's Tannehill off the bootleg. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. This defense could use some more of these types of plays. How about him reading it, driving on the football, and he's right there for the pass breakup. The Dolphins on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and ten. To throw is Tannehill. Looking downfield, and that's caught right side. He's got his man. And they pick up 25 as they convert on third. On that catch, he's already eclipsed 100 yards here in the first quarter. Charles, he's on pace for over 400. And playing with great confidence, isn't he? I think he probably had it coming into the game, and now that he's really come out of the game this strongly, how'd you like to be in the huddle with him right now? You know he's demanding the Give football. The ball. And guess what? I throw it to him. He's having a fantastic game, and they haven't defended him yet. Play fake, and it's Tannehill. And he finds a man on the crossing route. And they're able to get this one down to the 25. And a nice gain of 21 yards. So on that play, defense was in the zone. They ran a crossing route offensively, but the defense there, you got to be good with communication, don't you? You certainly do, and it's not something that is really evident when you watch it on the screen. But everyone's talking, communicating, pointing, and it keeps you from chasing receivers because you have a specific zone you have to cover. When a receiver's in your zone and he crosses to another one, you got to let your guy know they got a completion there, but I like the discipline they show to stay in their proper areas and then make the tackle. They'll run it now out of the gun. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. to speak of there. Maybe a yard down to the 20. 
I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. The Dolphins on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This will be third and five. A shotgun snap for Tannehill. Quick hitter here. It's complete. And that little deke, the juke move that we saw, able to give him the first down yardage before he's brought down. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defensive side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. They'll run it now, out of the gun. He juked him. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. At the end of one, the Dolphins with the early lead. And we'll be back to South Florida after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Back now with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter begins with the Dolphins in possession of the football. They face a second and seven to start things out.
Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. On second down, here's Tannehill. He almost had it. The big D lineman nearly had an interception. Instead, it falls down incomplete. I know in every game we do, we talk about momentum. That was a momentum play lost. And now there could be a letdown because they didn't get the interception. Yeah, you could almost hear the collective gasp on the sideline as he could not come up with that football. The Dolphins on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. This is third and seven. From the gun, here's Tannehill. And he couldn't corral it. It falls down incomplete, but maybe not a big deal given this big lead. Those throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. And Gano's kick is right through. And that will extend the lead out to 24. And that field goal caps an 11 play drive. That's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. After knocking through the field goal, here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. This is taken near the 13. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. The Steelers' offense now, they head back onto the field. And last time, able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. They start with a give to counter. Not much there. Maybe a couple up to the 35. Defense is always talking about earning the right to rush the passer on third down. And you know what offenses want? win first down so that can set things up for themselves better. And that wasn't helpful there. Not a big impact on first down. They go play action with Roethlisberger. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. So that one a hold right guard. And you understand why offensive and defensive linemen probably go to martial arts schools and work on their hands so often because that can be the make or break difference on a play. This time he had to grab a jersey in order to make the play happen. Got caught for the penalty. On second down, here's Roethlisberger. And his throw is going to be incomplete. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. And the Steelers on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. This will be a tough third and 18. Now Roethlisberger to throw. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. They wind up getting 16, but even that's not quite enough. It's fourth down. But that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. Here's Jordan Berry now as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Oh, boy, he fielded it right on the goal line. 
A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And the Dolphins drive will start deep in their own territory with a first and 10. The Dolphins offense now heads back on the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point? The kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him in the contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him in the contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Toe <laughs> Super toe. <laughs> He's lucky to be getting that one back. After what they've done with him all day long with all the targets trying to go after him, he's obviously gotten smart, and his pride has kicked in. Made a terrific play. Second and ten. Tannehill once more. Going right side here, and that's complete. He's at the 50. He's at the 30. Ten. And touchdown a big play there and even 90 yards and the Dolphins have got it on cruise control and I think it's safe to say we won't call many touchdown passes longer than that this year partner no I would agree with that totally and right now you're looking at an offensive coordinator conservative would not go next to his name <laughs> risk taker definitely because he valued the opportunity to create a big play against what could have been disaster if they end up getting sacked or fumbling the ball in the shadow of their own goal line. Gano now to add the extra point. And they're able to up the lead by one more. The long touchdown pass gets him six on a very, very tidy two-play drive that time. Gano out to kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Getting set to go again as we look at the back heading onto the field again. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. With the struggles we're seeing up front for the offense today, they've got to think about changing up their play calling. Some screens, some draws, some quick hitting plays in order to try and supplement the run game. You don't totally abandon it, but you try and give it a little bit of help. Now Roethlisberger to throw on second down. Fighting his safety valve here. That's complete. A very solid gain of 27. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. here on first down and his throw is going to be incomplete trying to get it there to Martavis Bryant and now it's second down 
I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Here's Roethlisberger throwing the out route incomplete. That's Brown. And the Steelers on third down. It's been a problem. Just one for seven thus far. Here it's third and two. Roethlisberger now off the bootleg. Throw left side complete. That's Connor. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Roethlisberger. The Dolphins get there this time and they bring him down. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football before he knew it. He was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Second down, Roethlisberger. Got his man complete over the middle. That's James. And he takes it down deep into enemy territory. It's a big play there for the Steelers. And even 40 yards. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. the Miami offensive unit now they get set to take over and they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone and just think of what it's like now on the sideline because when you score a touchdown you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive when you scored points it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there now a handoff here to his running back and he'll get only a couple up to the 22. Well, he's looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple of yards out of it. Because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. The throw on second down is Tannehill. And a quick throw here. That's complete. Takes this up just short of the 30, but he was able to avoid that earlier tackle. Nice move. The reception good for seven. It's third down. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end.
The Dolphins on third down. They've had good success, five for eight to this point. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Back to throw, Tannehill. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. T.J. Watt. He's the one that gets him down. It'll be a loss of five, and it'll bring up fourth down. And oh no, they spike it here. That was fourth down. So they spike it on fourth down, and they will lose the football. So shall we say a bold decision to go for it, and that bold decision does not pay off. And when you talk about bold, you're saying all caps? All caps. Yeah, without a doubt. Maybe they're telling their defense they have a lot of faith in them. I mean, that's how you have to spin it, is that you tell your defense, you know something? We were able to go for it there because you guys are so good. I'm not worried about things. That's the only explanation I can come up with in this situation. Well, he better get ready to spin it for that post-game presser because you know he's going to be out. He's going to have to spin it for his own locker room, frankly. Now Roethlisberger over the middle here to Brown. A gain of six there on first. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play, but what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything, and sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. We always talk about receivers. If the ball hits your hand, you're supposed to haul it in, but it is hard to adjust to a pass during a little bit behind you. That one was all the momentum going forward. Couldn't contort his body back to grab it. Steelers on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third and four. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. He gets it to Brown, complete. And he will have the first down inside the 10 to the nine yard line. They're able to convert on third down and that sets up a first and goal. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. seven and that gets him three yards closer here as it brings up second and goal well if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there they sold out to stop that running play i'd say keep that in mind they want to try that again go play action hit them over the top and losing yardage. They're driven back to the eight-yard line. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here, not even a thought, is yeah, it? Defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. And this offense on third down today, they've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. This is third and goal. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And he's going to be dropped back at the 15-yard line. 
starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. Now Chris Boswell for the Steelers field goal try. From the right hash, this from 33. And Boswell's kick is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So the drive stalls out, but they are able to put three points on the board. Yeah, just a yard or two shorter than an extra point, but no problems converting there. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This is taken at the three. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Here's Ryan Tannehill and the Dolphin offense back out onto the field. And he's been good. Two first-half touchdown passes, no interceptions so far. Does a lot for your confidence. Does a great deal for your team. Gives them a lead, and they feel really good about how they're playing. I think he expects to throw at least another one. I was going to say, now he wants the first-half hat trick, doesn't he? Oh, without a doubt. Go ahead and fling him on the field, folks. He wants that type of celebration. On first down, it's Tannehill. Oh, that was dangerous. Threw it into coverage, almost picked. But instead, they'll keep it on second down. Definitely worth taking in our deep shot here. He's already found the end zone twice here in the first half. Yeah, go back to that same well. They've had trouble containing him, but able to contain him on that play. Second down following the incompletion. Now they'll run on the draw. Space to maneuver at the 40. And finally brought down right at the midfield strike. That good for 22 at a first down. And that's why defense coordinators always preach 11 guys to the ball. Because sometimes you have a missed tackle, but if you have a swarm of guys around, less room for them to roam even after the first missed tackle. In this case, tackle was missed, plenty of open field to get after that. It's Tannehill firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he's brought down. 11 more on that one, and another first down. Talk about a big first half. Already has the two touchdowns, adding to his receiving total there and picking up the first down. He's coming off the line so fast. I think he's intimidating the defensive backs with his explosiveness, and he's chipping away at their confidence. Tannehill on first down. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Here's Tannehill now on second down. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. 
That was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. The Dolphins on third down, five out of nine thus far. This time it's third and three. They'll fake the handoff. Now Tannehill. The swing pass caught. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. That has to be frustrating for defenders. Third down, they take a shot way downfield. There is good coverage. Yet they still come down with the football and pick up a big game. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option of running play action and maybe throwing it. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Throwing again is Tannehill. And that is caught. Touchdown, Miami. So second and goal there from the one. They go to the air. And the perfect down to throw the football in this sequence. Second down is always kind of that. Do they throw it? Do they run it? They worked it out to perfection on that one by throwing it into the end zone. Gano for the extra point. Time running out here on the play clock. Delay of game, offense. That's going to set him back five yards. Gano now to add the extra point. He's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. Gano out to kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. Oh, leaves him behind on the spin. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Now the Steelers' offense gets ready to get back onto the field. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that. They weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants a drive to end with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Part of I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. 
And again this time to the tailback. And he loses the football a second time. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, and that could have been trouble. All I can say about this play is that someone's living right. I mean, he's trying to gain yardage, trying to get upfield. Ball comes free. What's that panic that we've talked about oftentimes that you feel when you yeah, lose the ball? You can sense it. Oh, you can sense it. And somehow he got to it and was able to recover it for his squad. And the Steelers on third down. They're hitting at just 30 percent, three for ten. This is third and four. Here we go. Yeah, block 80. To throw here, Roethlisberger. Pressure from behind, and he's going to be thrown down. Raquan McMillan in there to get him for a loss of nine, and that'll lead to fourth down. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. Tough spot here for the offense to start. Watch the curl, watch the curls. Here we go. On first and ten, Tannehill. And this is going to be incomplete. I remember growing up playing basketball. My coach has always talked about communicating on defense, making sure you talk on defense, know where your screens are, know where the cuts are coming from, who has who. Well, guess what? It's the same thing in football. Even though there's more noise out there, you can hear all the screams of screen, screen. This defense, the bench, everyone let them know what the play was, and that's why they were able to react and knock the ball away. From his goal line here, Tannehill. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And he's able to get this up just shy of the 15. Try to escape the shadow of their goal post. That helped 10 yards, first down. And with that completion, he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half. Boy, a tough start for the secondary defensively. It is, and it's got to put a dent in their confidence. And, you know, you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays. But with the kind of numbers he's putting up here, it's starting to wear on them a little bit, I think. So they're looking at each other and trying to figure out what defense will work and how can they play better without getting beat deep for big passes. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he's got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. went up to about the 38. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Well, they don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Play action. It's Tannehill. Taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. Well, 
We remind you that coming up at halftime, Larry Ridley will have the highlights and analysis of this first half from our studios in Orlando. And I have a feeling those highlights will be pretty one-sided, too. Yeah, I think you're right, partner. Now a first down throw, Tannehill. Throwing middle, and it's complete. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> and what a really nice game right there on first down for them. It brings up a nice second down for them. Second down, here's Tannehill. And his throw here's incomplete. Pretty nice coverage there, but a missed opportunity for an interception. Let's face it, a lot of these defenders, they've got it all. Speed, athleticism, hands, a little bit questionable. Third and two, Tannehill. They'll tussle for it, and this is going to be caught. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And on that last play there, he's over 400 yards passing now. Do you know what that generally means? Success. <laughs> that, and it means you really didn't miss opportunities. Usually very accurate. The ball's getting to the right place. Guys are making yardage after the catch to help you out that way. I mean, the whole team has picked it up. And don't forget, that means the offensive line has had to pass protect pretty well, too. Yeah, everyone dialed in. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Again, Tannehill, his throw incomplete. It feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. This offense so far on third down, now they've converted seven times and could use another right now. They're looking at a third and goal here. To the air again, Tannehill. And it falls incomplete after almost being intercepted. A pick there would have been great. The good news for the defense now, it's fourth down. I know ultimately that feels like a good defensive play but I know it's really not. They had a chance to keep points off the board. Now they have a chance to kick a field goal by missing that shot. Yeah, especially at this spot in the field. He's got to be upset he couldn't come up with that INT. So now the field goal unit trots out there for the third time tonight. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And Gano's kick is right through. And that will just add three more to a lead that's already out of hand. They had a long way to go. They started that drive at their own three, and they scored three from it. What an excellent job by an offense that could have very easily just said, okay, let's just take a few plays safe, punt the ball away, and play some defense. Instead, they found a way to attack and put themselves in position to put points on the board. After knocking through the field goal, here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. This is fielded at the goal line. <laughs> and that should give his guys a spark. He's up all the way to the 44-yard line. Any return that gets you to midfield is a great return. One first down, and you're almost in field goal position. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. Now, I'm not going to say you completely abandon the passing game, but it would really behoove them to get this running game going more. That's the identity most teams are seeking, able to establish themselves, control a the game by running it. 
have to touch it multiple times in order to have success in this game. Yeah, as we say, yeah, that's right. As we say all the time, that sets up the passing game. I feel like a broken record with that. Listen, we can be broken records all we want. Bottom line is, lather up that big horse <laughs> and let him run. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. Second and ten now. It's Roethlisberger. Now been hit, and he lost the football. It's loose. And fortunately for him, he's able to get it back. But it will be a loss on the play. So the sack, and now a third and long situation for the Steelers and Ben Roethlisberger. A handoff as they run the counter play. And he is going to be knocked flat on his back. Oh, big hit near the 34-yard line. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And that's going to make it fourth down. We just saw another example of how the defense is winning this game. Really at the point of attack, the offensive line is just getting pushed around. I think now as a play caller, you've got to give them a little bit of help. Maybe you keep your tight ends a little bit more. Maybe the running backs help you a little bit with the pass blocking. But you've got to help them get some confidence because you can't abandon the play calling right now. Here's Jordan Berry now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. So the two teams will head to the locker rooms here in Miami with the Dolphins on top. As we send you up to Orlando and with our EA Sports Halftime Report, here's Larry Ridley. Thanks, Brandon. I'm Larry Ridley, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. The Dolphins are simply running the show in the first half. They've controlled the game and are way out in front. The Steelers will have to make some adjustments before the second half gets underway. So let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Now first and 10, Tannehill's going to take off here, and he kept off the long drive with the TD. The Dolphins up by a touchdown. Steelers with the ball midway through the first. The pass ends up being picked off. Manning's going to turn it around for a touchdown. The lead now at 17. Midway through the first quarter, Tannehill's on point with the throw, and he's going to go 16 yards for the score. The lead now at 24. Dolphins take it early in the second. Tannehill's gonna find his mark, and that goes as a 90-yard touchdown. As the lead continues to mount. So that'll do it from here. Let's go back down to Miami with Brandon and Trump.
Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. Fielded about a yard deep. The Steeler offense now with a football first here to begin the third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But this You're is a real, do I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. But we'll see if that script is a good one for them. Second down, here's Roethlisberger. James has got it, complete. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Roethlisberger to his big target, James. All six, seven of him for a Steeler first down. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work. And that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Now a handoff looking right. And able to get a couple as he's across the 40 to the 41. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. It's Roethlisberger. Blitz coming and down he goes. And Dominican Sue in there to get him the sixth time. They've sacked him tonight. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game. The way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. So the sack, and now a third and long situation for the Steelers and Ben Roethlisberger. Now it's Roethlisberger. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. Here's Jordan Berry now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. This is taken at the 18. And now running right through it. A very good return that time. 18 yards. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. So here are the Dolphins now. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. They have the lead here. Well, we talk a lot about pregame speeches. What are halftime speeches like? For the most part, not nearly as emotional. They're a lot more clinical. Every now and then, though, they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire. But in this case, let's go into the virtual locker room because here's what I think happened. They got in there and they said, listen, 
Let's take control right away. Yeah, Defense. We got the lead. Yeah. We've got the, de we've got the, we've got the lead. Defense. Don't give up any points. Turn the ball back over to the offense and let them go down and score and give us more of a cushion in the game. Check so far. Defense shut them down. Let's see what the offense gets done. Second down now after the incompletion. Now they'll run on the draw. Oh, and now he bowls him over. That one good for 13 at a Dolphin first down. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? So it'll be first down here after the run. Tannehill. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. So the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. Now they try the right side here. Oh, he's got some breathing room. He won't go down. <laughs> and he takes it down deep into enemy territory. A big play that time for the Dolphins. 46 yards. So down inside the five-yard line, I have to say, really just a poor job defensively there. You're exactly right. As a former defensive back, that was not played well at all. But give credit to the offense and give credit to the guy running the football. He gets it down all the way inside the five. He was trying to get that one to Kenny Stills. That'll bring up second down. Let's give this defense some credit now. They let the guys get downfield. But when push came to shove, they stood their ground. And now they'll likely force a field goal attempt. Now Tannehill, the quick slant caught. A touchdown saving tackle there. Now it's third and goal. I'm wondering if the same thing went through your mind as mine. When I see a big man like that make a catch, all I keep thinking to myself is, big man with football. <laughs> Look out, everyone. He may not juke you a whole lot, right? He may not run past you because of his size. You're talking about a guy weighing in the 270 range. But boy, once he gets his mitts on the ball, he's going to be tough to bring down. They're knocking on the door as they come to the line here on third and goal from the one. Tannehill now to throw. And he's going to go down just outside of the five right around the six-yard line. Bud Dupree in there to get him for his second sack of the night. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. So out comes the field goal team once more. This is a fairly straightforward 22-yard short attempt. And Gano's kick is right through. And they're sitting pretty now as the lead grows even further. So make him four out of four now in the field goal department, and he's able to extend their lead. When drives have bogged down, he's been automatic out there. So nice to have a kicker you can count on to put points on the board. After knocking through the field goal, here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. This is fielded a couple yards deep. Antonio Brown, kiss him goodbye. The 40. And it'll be 
a terrific return here as he gets it down all the way inside the 30. We all know the teams never want to use the word panic. But if they expect to win this game, it has to start right here, right now. That return just set them up for points, and it needs to be a touchdown, not a field goal. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. And he'll give it here to his running back. And only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Now Roethlisberger to throw. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Maybe a little frustration starting to creep in. The offensive line hasn't done a great job of protecting him in this game, and there he was, hit again as he threw it. Yeah, another time on his backside. Probably starting to get a little frustrated. Got to keep his composure. Can't let the defense know that they're getting to him. Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. Now Roethlisberger. And he's going to go down here. A sack. They push him back to the 34. Charles Harris coming in to drop him for a loss of eight. And it'll be fourth down. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Now Chris Boswell for the Steelers' field goal try. On the right hash, officially this will be a 51-yard attempt. And this is good. He got just enough to clear the crossbar as he drops it in from long distance. And they'll get back three, but this remains a large deficit. So his third field goal of the ball game brings him a bit closer, but there's no question. They need to start turning some of these threes into sixes. And sevens and probably even eights. You know, as a kicker, you just head out when you're called upon, so he's done his job. It's the rest of the offense that needs to get it in gear. They want to close this gap. This is taken at the three. And yeah, they'll have good field position here as he's out of bounds up at about the 34-yard line. And out come the Dolphins now. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. On first down, Tannehill. And his throw is incomplete. That one didn't quite make it to the target, but that's not always a function of the strength of the arm of the quarterback, is it? Sometimes there's just too much pressure there. In any case, the ball doesn't arrive. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. Now it's Tannehill. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. 
Let's see what the defense dials up here. Third and four. Here's Tannehill. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. Well, we're used to seeing the guy that you consider the number one receiver double covered, but how about this guy? He's double covered and finds a way to make the play for a first down. That's how you increase your Madden rating, right? No doubt about that at all. And you know something? I think we'll hear about that from him soon. So the offense has it first and 10. Tannehill. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And oh, he is really laid out that time. Knocked flat on his back. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. The throw on second down is Tannehill. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Kenny Stills, the intended receiver, and it's third and four. But not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders look a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. The Steelers insert their nickel defense on third down. Yeah, they add a DB. A shotgun snap for Tannehill. Over the middle, complete. It's four. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. The Dolphin passing game rolling here. They've got another first down. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they can do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that'll make this a second and 13. Hey, a lot of points have been scored in this game, but what a nice play by the defense. Stepping up on that one, maybe they'll get things going in their direction after a play like that. Here's Tannehill. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, there was no trace of nervousness there. He was able to diagnose that play from his linebacker position, stay in excellent coverage, and bat the ball away. Ninth play of the drive coming up, and certainly not an easy one on third and long. Out of the gun, Tannehill. And he's got it. Touchdown, Dolphins. You have fun with this one, partner? I am. I mean, he's been fun to watch under center. We always talk about you know, getting to the next level, right, when we see people get into the zone. This guy's in the master class right now. What a performance he's putting on, just carving him up. Four touchdown passes, carving him up is right. Seems like everything he throws is going to be a completion and going in the end zone.
Cano for the extra point. And the lead grows even larger here in the third quarter. That time, a nine-play drive. And it winds up in six points for the Dolphins. deep and he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22 yard line Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field and fortunate to get points on the board last time they had to hit a really long field goal to do so the kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. And his throw here is incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. And on second and ten now. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he will fight his way forward to about the 23-yard line. Just a couple there on the second down run. Now they're staring at a third and eight situation. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. Third down, Roethlisberger. And some room to work. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Call it a gain of five. And that's going to bring up the fourth down. Here's Jordan Berry now. He's been terrific so far. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Fielded just inside the 20. So dangerous with a football in his hands. Call that a return of 38. And the Dolphins will begin this drive in great field position, first and 10. And the Dolphins getting set to go here. And last time out, another touchdown. And I think there may be some empty seats around here by the time the fourth quarter comes around. Yeah, I have to agree with you because this was just about decided. But you know who benefits from all those empty seats? Who? You and me <laughs> trying to get to the airport. That's the roads true. will be fairly that, clear that is by the one time positive. we have to leave the booth. Three down, three down. Hey, check, check. Hey, Tannehill on first down. And a scary incompletion, almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. Oh. Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and ten. Oh, 
They'll run it now out of the gun. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. The line to gain is the 33 on third down. Throwing on third down, Tannehill. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. That's a first down if he holds on, but you saw the contact. Able to jar it free from him and force a fourth down. Great play defensively there, as you said, just to knock it free, because if he had caught that, pass the sticks, first down. So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. This will be from 56 yards out. That's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short. No good. And this score will stay right where it is. I tell you, it's not easy kicking field goals in the best of conditions. Yet in a down four like we're in right now, it makes it that much harder. And sure enough, they can't convert here. The Steelers offense now, they head back onto the field. They are right now just ice cold. I mean, they have struggled big time in this game, and they're getting blown out. How do they adjust? So tough because we always talk about it being a team game, and you need all 11 working well together. But every now and then, partner, you need that one guy who can make a play against all odds that maybe can ignite things. And I think that's what they're looking for right now. Yeah, you talk about going to your playmakers. They probably need to do it. Find someone that you're used to touching the football that makes big plays and give them that opportunity to maybe wake up everyone else. Now, that's often a surprise for the defensive guys when they see the big fella slide out of the backfield and catch the ball. Not something they usually go over in practice very often. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Play action. Now Roethlisberger. His throw incomplete. When they're slinging it, and then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. And I see an extra defensive back on the field. Little surprise here on third and one. Roethlisberger will throw. And James has it. He's got a first down and more inside the 30. The Steelers able to pick up 18 yards there. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. Used to be occasional, right? Safety valve. Throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. Now a handoff here to his running back. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. Seven yards to go on second down. Off 
as they run the counter play. And a short gain here down to the 22. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it's going to make it third down at six. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense, and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock. You control the ball. And that way, you often control the game. So following the run, we'll see what they do here on third down. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And Big Ben intercepted a third time. Picked off at the 16. He's at the 40. Past the 20. And he will score. Touchdown, Miami. This D wanted to put it away before we even get to the fourth quarter, widening that margin a bit further. And while they won't just empty the bench just yet, if you're a backup, Start loosening up. I think I'll get a chance to play before this one is over now with that type of a cushion. Gano now to add the extra point. And the lead grows even larger here in the third quarter. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll wind up getting an extra couple yards here for his trouble as he'll bring this one out to the 27. Out comes the Steeler offense now, ready to see what they can do here. And following the pick six, and they decent field position and throwing that pick six. We'll see how they attack this drive. And I think all you say to your guy is, listen, let's just take care of the football a little bit better. Make some better decisions on this drive, and they'll probably help him a little bit with maybe some really high percentage throws early to let him get settled back yeah, in. but they told him, and they told us, they've got confidence. That, that's not a problem. Yeah, not a problem at all. They just want to make sure they get things settled down a little bit for their offense and give their defense a little bit of a chance to rest. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. First play of the drive, let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher, a really nice run. Second down following the run. Play fake. Here's Roethlisberger. And unable to connect on the long pass. It falls down incomplete. If you're going to take a shot down, feel second and one is a perfect time to do it. You figure you're going to be in heavy run defense, you should have good windows to throw it downfield. And it looked like there was something there right after the snap, but the defense able to recover. On third down. It's Connor, and he's going to have the first down at about the 38. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. I like this focus there because he wasn't thinking about breaking that one big. All he thought about was, I need one. Let's go get that. Ended up picking up two. Here we go. 
On first down, it's Roethlisberger. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. That was a nice throw out there to the flat, but they defended that pretty well. The hope is to go ahead and put it on him so he can turn and get upfield and gain additional yardage. It just wasn't anywhere to go on that play. take this one across the 45 up to about the 46 yard line still a couple yards short of the first as the three yard gain brings up a third down so second down was a run play now let's see what they do on third Roethlisberger now off the bootleg Rush gets home, down he goes. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh. He'll field this at the five. Good blocking there, nearly sprung him as it is. It'll go as a 19-yard return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. They go play action here on first down. Wide open receiver complete. And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. Three quarters in the... We'll return with more preseason football on EA Sports. Back now in Miami. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. stoppage here as it looks like we've got a dolphin shaken up on the play definitely the last thing you want to see here in a preseason game we'll be right back four yards remaining now on second down First throw for the backup, Foles. And he almost intercepted it. They haven't picked a ball off yet. That probably should have been their first. And it's third down now. Well, he did almost everything right. Excellent coverage, breaks on the football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way. So he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it. Just move on to the next play. They'll run it now, out of the gun. 
And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. So, Brandon, when this offense gathers together to watch tape for this game, they're going to be feeling pretty good about themselves until the coaches get upset about the play we just saw. But you know their defense is going to be. But we put up big points all game long. The defense is going to win one every now and then. They'll try the field goal now with Graham Gano. This from 54 yards away. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, it's still a good size lead, so they haven't necessarily needed him, but this is now two missed field goals for him in this game so far. Yeah, and the question now is, will he be prepared when they do need him? Whether that's later in this game or sometime down the line, having a kicker you can count on is definitely imperative. And the Steelers set to take the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not, He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, <laughs> all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Oh, poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it oh, wasn't his go. fault. But so, hey, listen, there's going to be three casualties nine. at times. We're trying to win a game. And now the first throw for the backup quarterback. Under pressure here, and down he goes. Sack back at about the 43-yard line. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Taking it across midfield and inside the 45. It's a Pittsburgh first down, a gain of 13. It's lining up first and ten. 18, 18. Hurry up, here we go. Blue ah. They'll look to throw here. And yeah, this is going to be caught. He won the fight for the football. 23 yards on the play. I feel for some of these guys nowadays because it is so tough to be able to run with these tight ends. Their speed, their elusiveness, especially when they run across the field. Because you're not just running with him. You're trying to run through some traffic as well. Inside the 20 at the 19. It'll be a pickup of only a yard, and that'll bring up second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, ball may come your way. Second down now after the pass completion. And to give this time to the tailback. He'll get forward for three down to the 16-yard line. Here we go now. Three, 19. Out of the gun, 
now on third down. Now bottled up fumble. It's out. It's loose. And this is picked up by the Dolphins. He's at the 50. 30. The 20. 10. And he will score. Touchdown, Miami. It's not only to force the fumble, obviously, but to return it for a touchdown. And I know it's no fun for anyone who plays offense, but isn't it fun to see how a defense rallies when there's a fumble return and everyone tries to find someone to block and bring it all the way home? I always like their celebrations because they don't get there that often. No, they're not choreographed very well, usually. <laughs> Gano for the extra point. And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. That's fielded in the end zone. And he will be brought down here at about the 17-yard line. The Steelers' offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And they weren't on the sidelines for long, but I'll tell you what, I'm glad you and I weren't down there. We could hear them, <laughs> the coaches from all the way up here. They were adamant, you've got to hold on to the football or else we have no hope. Yeah, it's easy for me to laugh sitting up here, but you're exactly right. If we were down there, that message would have been received a whole different way. Because turnovers, they've been a big problem for them. Got to take care of the football. Got to hold on to it. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Nick Boyle that time. And it's second down. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. They'll run it now out of the gun. And hit behind the line. He lost the football. It's loose. And they take over already five yards deep into the red zone at the 15-yard line. You know, if this is the regular season part, we'd be talking about just how costly a mistake that was. But probably good for him to get it out of his system right now. Just hope for him and the team it's not a sign of things to come. Yeah, without a doubt. Plus, you got to worry about making the team. Those types of errors don't help you. Out comes the Dolphin offense now as they get set to take over here. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. A gain of six there on first. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. six-yard line. And that's some good tackling there to keep him short of that yellow line. Yeah, and defensively, all I'm thinking is that on that play, get me to third down. Get me into a position where I can make one more play and get my defense off the field. Now 
Foles. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. They'll try the field goal now with Graham Gano. This will be a 34-yard attempt. And Gano's kick is right through. And they're well on their way now as the lead grows even larger. So yet another field goal to end the drive. That has been a very common theme. He's now hit five of them in this game. Yeah, Brandon, as an offense, you hate that you've had to call on your kicker so often, but you have to love the fact that time and time again, he's come through. After knocking through the field goal, here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. And now out come the Steelers. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. like that, don't you? All game long, they've struggled hey, moving hey, the hey, ball, hey, turning hey, it over hey, on the last hey, possession. Hey, Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> Give him six on the play, and that'll make it a second down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Brought down there. Just a one yard pickup on the play, and they're going to face a third down. Let's see if they can convert here on third and three. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. 12 yards that time at a Pittsburgh first. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. to throw now on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. They'll look to throw here on first down. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Back to throw toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Basically, you're not going to outwork two guys very often. Double coverage. I thought he was going to go somewhere else with the football, 
I get it. That's a stud wide receiver. You want to try to get him the football. Yeah, sometimes you rely on him a bit too much. You forget the other options that are out there. All right, here we go. Back to throw here. Quick hitter here. It's complete. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 41. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. Here's Jordan Berry now as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh. And this will be out of bounds, and they spot it at the 15-yard at the line. Not too bad. So now here come the Dolphins. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. The best way to do it? touchdowns and he'll lose yardage here back at the 11 he goes down a loss of a full three yards and now it's second down well brandon pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage they've got the football but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play you know my, my music teacher back in new paltz mrs bythema bagley used to say don't go prestissimo when you really want to go largo and what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll be taken down at the 18. It's a seven-yard pickup. They'll be looking now to third and six. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. Here's Foles. He's going to sling this deep downfield, and he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Fourth quarter, you've got the big lead. If you're coaching, Charles, you, you still taking shots like that downfield? I'd be a little more concerned with running some clock and making sure you're taking care of the lead because you keep flinging it around, you throw a couple of picks, you can put yourself in jeopardy. Here's Bradley Pinion now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. It's taken to the 26. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And the Steelers will go on offense here. First and 10. The Steelers offense now. They get ready to head back on the field. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. Let's go! 3 They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. James Conner, the running back, his intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. Back to throw now on second and 10. And he comes back with one complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 
The Steelers picking up 15 yards there at a first down. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not only going to catch the football. He's going to run away from me a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. Fresh set of downs here. Now let's go. Three nineteen. He'll drop to throw. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. He'll get a couple yards on that one. And it's a second down. Still need eight yards for the first here on second down. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. They always say that real estate is about location. Well, guess what? When it's a slant route, the quick ones, Timing, timing, timing. Got to be able to lead your man with the football. And the timing off right there. Threw it behind him. And now on third down, they'll need to get it to the 36 to pick up the first. Here we go now. They'll look to throw. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. Well, they try to swing it on left into the flat. Complete, but really nice open field tackling. And they played that one like a great boxer. They were on their toes on that one. They weren't back on their heels reacting to the play. No, they saw it, came right for it, and made a nice tackle for lost yardage. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. Oh, he'll field it in the end zone. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Dolphins will start their drive at the 20-yard line. The Dolphins offense now working their way back onto the field. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. here on first down throwing right and that's complete and he's going to get this one across the 30 yard line that one good for 13 and a dolphin first down So here we go, first and ten now. Foles. Going right side here, and that's complete. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. The Dolphin passing game rolling here. They've got another first down. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And his throw is incomplete. 
Now the secondary's really struggled today, but that's a little bit of a measure of revenge, isn't it? And they just followed the basic rules. See ball, knock ball away, turns into a nice play. So second and 10 here. hit jars the ball free and brings up third down you get a tight end like this and you know he's used to dishing out punishment but here he's the one that has to absorb the contact and as a result unable to hold on to the football Six yards. They have the nice cushion. <laughs> they just want to pour it on right now, still throwing the football. And I know my background says, why do you need to do this? Just go ahead and run out the clock and get a win. But as many people pointed out to me, it's a video game, man. <laughs> go ahead and put the numbers up. Sportsmanship, not an issue. Exercise those fingers. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Now back to throw. And it's caught right at the 10-yard line. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Play number six on this drive. He'll look to throw. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Trent Taylor there, and that'll bring up second down. You can't be precise with your throws, especially in this situation. You're inside the 10-yard line going into the end zone, but sometimes the emotion, the excitement, Sometimes the decisions just aren't made very well because of that. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. This is caught, and he will get into the end zone. It's another touchdown. This thing is ugly. So another score there. Often you talk about the three phases of the game, defense, offense, special teams. It's been a clean sweep in this one, hasn't it? It certainly has. They've been pretty dominant throughout this game, and privately, the head coach will add a fourth phase. That's the coaching. And he'll tell the ownership <laughs> that as he tries to negotiate a new contract <laughs> off of this win. They are looking strong here in the fourth quarter. Gano now to add the extra point. The play clock's running down. Oh, how about this? No good. Just his second miss of the year, and our score will stay right where it is. Gano out to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And a big hit there as he runs into a brick wall at the 17-yard line. 
The Steelers offense now they head back onto the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. Hey. Hey. Here we go now. Green. Ah. They'll set up a throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was looking for his big tight end there, Jesse James. And it's third down. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. They'll set up the throw. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. And this punt goes out of bounds, and it'll be marked inside the 40. The Dolphins offense now ready to go back out onto the field. says this will be incomplete. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. Second down here after the incomplete pass. They'll drop the throw. And that one is incomplete. He just dropped it. But they're up big on the scoreboard, so maybe he can chuckle about later. And the offense looks to pick up the first here on third after that incompletion. Looking to throw. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Time for a break. We'll come back and wrap up garbage time after this. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. They've got a fourth down here in a game that looks to have been decided already. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he's on to punt for Miami. This one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. 
And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team and we were losing late in the game like this and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And the coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. And the offense still has a couple plays to go to pick up the first on second down and three. All right, here we go. Green, 39. Green, 39. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And heavy contact. He is knocked down hard right there around the 35-yard line. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. Got it up over the 40 to the 41. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Shotgun, he'll look to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. They'll look to throw here. And that is incomplete. Down to 15 seconds now. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. there for his third pick of the game. Instead, it's third down. Tremendous coverage there. Just did not catch the football and complete the interception. But what do they say all the time? If he had really good hands, he'd be playing offense. Four down, four down. Here we go now. Ah! He's going to let it fly. And that is incomplete. Stopping the clock with five seconds to go. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. 46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. And he'll take this in at the one-yard line. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game. But these two teams, they had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slop. Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Are you I, one of those guys I'm a little skeptical, skeptical about it, or did you skeptical. trust it? But when I saw just a big blob of green on the radar, I said, okay, let's trust. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad you took my advice, got your notes laminated, because, you know, open-air boot, that rain can affect us as well, although not as much as the guys on the field. But let's face it, it's kind of fun to watch these types of games, isn't it? It is. By the way, how impressive is it that you travel with a laminator? I didn't even know there was a portable laminator. The things that you learn. Golly, wise beyond his years.
That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Dolphins are winners here as we say so long from South Florida.